Hey friends, it's Courtney. Welcome back to my channel, Fira, where I talk about cruelty-free beauty, gothic fashion, and lifestyle. I also talk a lot about mental health, so if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be ramping up my mental health stuff. So today's video is going to be a life update. I'm going to be talking about why and how I'm staying home for the foreseeable future and how I'm going to keep from going stir-crazy stir and all of that. So the number one reason that I'm going to be staying home for the foreseeable future is that I'm going to be practicing a social distancing. If you're unsure of what that is, click over here because I wrote a whole blog post about social distancing. I'll go ahead and wait. With a new global pandemic that's sweeping through the USA, I do not want to leave my house. I am trying to help flatten the curve by staying inside. So I am at an elevated health risk, even though I am 41 years old and I work out and I eat healthy, all of those things, because I have allergy-induced asthma, which means that I have to occasionally rely on an inhaler. That means my lungs are weaker than your average person's lungs. Um, Right now, out my allergies are terrible, and I haven't I have an inhaler here in case I needed it in an emergency. I needed to use my inhaler last year during allergy season. Before that, I hadn't needed to use my my inhaler for allergies for over five years because of the fact that I started working out and getting into shape and just didn't need it anymore. But um, allergy season ha has been getting worse and worse. So, in addition to that, um, my partner Dave, who is younger than I am, has an autoimmune disorder that you know we haven't been able to get it figured out yet. We're on year five of trying to find a diagnosis, and that puts him at an elevated risk specifically because a lot of the stuff that helps him out are anti-inflammatories. So between his health risks and mine, we are not leaving the house. Nobody's allowed in or out. We have a quarantine zone for packages and mail that come in where it sits for 24 hours before anybody can touch it. Um, we have been, uh, that's how we've been handling all of our deliveries and everything is it goes into a quarantine zone for 24 hours and then I deal with it. I'd been watching everything that had been going on around the world pretty closely. And so this past Saturday, there were two events I was supposed to go to. One was my friend Robbie's birthday party. Happy belated birthday, Robbie. And that was going to be in Orlando at Cocktails and Screams. And it was going to be an amazing time, but there were going to be at least, you know, 20 or more people there because it was at a club. And so we all talked about it and decided, no, it wasn't worth the risk. So we canceled that event. I did still end up going to a different event in Orlando that day. I went to a um, tea party at my friend's house, which had eight people. And about half the people who went to that party were people who also work from home like I do. And that was the last uh, the last social event that I did with anybody. And we had all agreed that after that event that we shouldn't be going out. And then it came out in the news that um, people were that, that uh, people were recommending, you know, don't get it, don't go to gatherings of 50 or more people. So, yeah, not a problem. So this past Monday was the last time I left my home. And it's because uh, Dave had an outpatient procedure surgery scheduled and they still wanted to go ahead and do it. So I drove him there to his procedure. This was at a small clinic. He was the only, um, he was one of two people in the waiting room. They were 20 feet apart. They were told to stay on opposite sides of the room. He went in and had his procedure. He came back out he, and he came home. And that was the last time he left and we've been staying at home ever since. So I know that I'm speaking from a place of privilege, but I am, I am staying at home for the foreseeable future until this whole mess passes. I'm only leaving my home for medical emergencies or if I need food and I'm trying to have as much delivered as possible as I explained. Before all of this happened last week, I went and stocked up on a bunch of non-perishable foods. So my entire freezer is stuffed with frozen broccoli and I've got plenty of safe catch, low mercury tuna. I did not stock up on toilet paper like everyone else in the world so, um, because I have a bidet. If you don't know what a bidet is or why you would use a bidet, click over here because I wrote an awesome blog post explaining all about my bidet. I talk about affordable options, the options I have, etc stuff like that but that is why I don't need toilet paper like I said we stocked up in about a month's worth of uh, food and medications the only medication that I forgot to stock up on was my medical marijuana I did place an online order for my med my medical mar marijuana which was I placed the order like three days ago it's supposed to be delivered sometime today maybe so I might get it but I'd rather go without than um, go, go out out right now and risk an, an infection vector so if you want to know how you should be socially distancing yourself the right way I've got some tips for you. Number one, stay at home as much as possible. Um, people are not overreacting. Look at Italy. Look at how people have been having horrible things happen there. Stay at home as much as possible. If you can work from home, 
take that option. If your company doesn't offer work from home, but your job is something that you could do from home, ask if you can work from home. Because the fewer people that go out, the few people that are, that are infected, the fewer deaths we will have. Number two, you should avoid public places. If you have to go out in public, go out at a non-peak time. So for an example, I typically always try to go out at non-peak times because I work from home. I often schedule my appointments for between like 12 and 3 p.m. That's what I would say is a non-peak time for things like the grocery store. You should not be hosting get-togethers or parties or anything like that. Um, I live like five minutes from four of my best friends because they live together. They, they just built their house and everything. So they are really close, literally five minutes away. That's one of the reasons I bought this house is because we're so close to them. But because they um, still have one person who has to leave uh, their house, I cannot go over there and visit them because somebody is still going in and out of their house and I don't want to increase our risk. So don't have gatherings, even if they're small gatherings, be safe. Postpone things that are non-essential. Uh, elective surgeries, non-essential shopping trips. Like as an example, I'm not getting my nails done. I'm not getting my brows done. I'm not getting my lash lift. I'm not getting um, anything done because I don't want to risk going out and possibly being exposed to anything. I am limiting my social interaction literally to Dave and my two dogs and whoever I talk to online and you guys. So I'm not going out, I'm not seeing people or anything like that. I'm literally trying to stay in to prevent exposure. And I feel like this is something everyone should be doing to flatten the curve. Also, this should be common sense, but also under how to social distance properly is if you feel sick, don't go out, don't leave your house, don't infect other people. Uh, the, the big problem with what's going on right now is that so many people are asymptomatic. That means that they aren't presenting any symptoms. They don't feel bad. So there's no way to know. If you need things at your house, use Amazon, use grocery delivery services, um, anything to get stuff delivered to you. If you need food, they're still doing, you know, Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, all of that's still available right now. I think that's going to change. But until it does, if you're trying to stay at home to limit your interactions, that's another way you can. Although, um, if you're going to be ordering food like that, you can't really quarantine it for 24 hours or it's going to go bad. If you can't do something like that, you try to do things like curbside pickup for groceries. Where my parents live, they live out in the middle of nowhere in Indiana, the closest grocery store is a Walmart, and Walmarts have curbside pickup for groceries. You should be utilizing that to minimize your exposure risk so you don't have to go inside of a store. And um, the number one thing I would, would say people should do to properly social distance is embrace technology and use technology to talk with your family, friends, and loved ones. So I've been making phone calls. I've been using FaceTime. I've been using Facebook Messenger video, um, Google Hangouts video. I've been using all those different types of uh, video services to chat with my friends and see how they're doing, to, to chat with my family and tell them I love them. And that's just a really great way to keep connected and hopefully keep some of you extroverts from going crazy. As an introvert, I can stay in for a month or more and have no problems. I have. I have stayed in for a month and not left the house and been just fine with it. But it's because I'm an introvert and I'm okay with that. I get enough social, social interaction to meet my needs via online. <laughs> okay, so if you are wondering, like, so what are some other ways I can keep from going stir crazy while I'm stuck at home right now and, you know, trying to keep safe? And as I mentioned, uh, you know, use video chat to talk with your friends and loved ones. Um, you can, I am recommending people start a new exercise routine. As I mentioned, I briefly uh, before, you know, hit my friend Tanya up. If you need help coming up with your own exercise routine, she can make a custom plan just for you. I recommend meditating. If you have never tried meditation, I would go onto YouTube and look for some guided meditation videos and start with that. But that can help you to feel less stress and also help you to practice mindfulness, which is more of like living in the moment and being like enjoying like the present moment for what's going on and kind of forgetting everything else. The third thing on my list is um, for things you can do to keep from going stir crazy is play video games. And I love video games as a choice, whether you're playing a massively multiplayer online game like World of Warcraft, or if you're playing a single player game. There's Word Search and Wordscapes. So those are two of like my favorite uh, games to play on the phone. I, I My friends tease me because I like to get baked and play word games. <laughs> That's something that I would I would check out. I know I personally went back to playing World of Warcraft recently, 
So, you know, I'm on there. If you want to say hi to me, let me know in the comments below and I'll tell you my character name and we can say hi. <laughs> you can also be using this time to educate yourself, to learn a new skill or something like that. There are tons and tons of free educational courses that people are offering online right now. Um, there are paid sites like Udemy. I've used Udemy for years. I love them and I highly recommend them. But you can also go to like amazingeducalresources.com for different classes you can take. And I believe there are like over 450 Ivy League courses that have popped up that are now available for people for online learning. Okay, so if you don't want to educate yourself, I recommend you try reading some books. There are tons and tons and tons of great post-apocalyptic post post science fiction, fantasy, urban fantasy, whatever you want out there. Kindle is, um, the Kindle Unlimited store is excellent if you want to use that. Right now, I am recommending that people read a book series by Myra Grant, which is called the News Flush Trilogy, because it's about how the U.S. handled a pandemic with zombies and there's a lot of really interesting social commentary in there about like the state of the U.S. and politics and I thought it was a great book so I highly recommend reading that book. It's by Myra Grant. Well but Myra Grant is her pen name. The author's actual name is Shauna, um, Shauna McGuire and I love her books. I think she's absolutely amazing so I highly recommend that. Okay, so some other things you can do if you are bored in this time is spend time training your pets to make your pets a better member of your family. So if you have a cat, you could, for example, train your cat how to use the toilet instead of a litter box. I mean, it's not like the cat's gonna need toilet paper anyways. <laughs> Um, if you have a dog, you can start teaching your dog like better behaviors, like work on extended stay, um, teach them fun tricks. Phaedra used to know how to feign death, which was, you know, play, it basically it was a World of Warcraft thing where I taught her to feign death so she would pretend to die. Um, my friend Erin actually does a much better job with her dog, uh, her dog Snickers. She taught Snickers to um, basically go bang, bang, you're dead, and like he dies dramatically. So there's a lot of like fun you can have with your pets. And on that note, I recommend that you consider either fostering or adopting a pet during this time because that will help your mental health so much by having another living creature to interact with. And I believe right now shelters are really, really desperate for people to foster or adopt. So if you can, that might be a great thing to do. Um, next on my list of things to do when you're stir crazy would be to binge watch TV shows or movies. While I don't think that you should do this 24 seven every single day, I do think that there can be a lot of fun in binging stuff. Um, a couple weekends ago, I was really depressed. So I ended up watching every single Jurassic Park movie back to back and that put me in a better mood. <laughs> so I would recommend doing things like that. Um, Netflix is gonna have a lot of great shows to to binge. I'm actually really excited because there's a new show that starts tonight on Hulu's free Hulu um, via Freeform, which is called like Motherland, which is like a witch show. So I basically watch all of like the supernatural urban fiction witch stuff that, that, that's out there. If it's supernatural and fiction, I want to see it. You, uh, during this stressful time, I also highly recommend that you practice self-care. And so, so in therapy, I learned that for me, self-care and self-soothing are really important. I actually have like this rocking chair type swing thing that's outside my house that I go sit in and rock myself to kind of help soothe. That's one of the things that my therapist had me um, try after my grandmother passed to kind of cope. And that's a really great thing for me. Um, hot baths are also really soothing. Those are two of the things that I use to self-soothe, like the rocking chair, the hot baths. Uh, meditation helps as well. I already mentioned um, talk to your friends. So obviously call them on the phone, FaceTime, etc. You, you got this. You can do that. That should be easy. One fun thing that I found that you could do when I was looking for more virtual things you could do. So you can like virtually tour national, par national parks in the U.S. You can virtually tour some of the most famous museums around the world. You can also watch live cams of baby animals around the U.S. How cool is that? I don't know about you, but I totally believe in the joke that crafting and actually making stuff from the crafting supplies are two different hobbies. But I know I personally have a shit ton of crafting stuff, so I'm planning on doing some crafting. I've got my adult coloring books and markers and crayons, so I might do some like soothing, like watch me color things in stuff like that. Oh, you can also attend online music festivals because a bunch of music artists have got together and put together this online mu online musical fest festival list so you can find your favorite music genre and listen to it from the comfort of your own home. And there are some movie, movie studios now that are releasing some of their movies uh, that were supposed to go into theaters either early or releasing them without ever putting them into theaters since so many theaters are closed down and you can buy them online to, or you can rent them online. So for example, um, Birds of Prey 
Prey is going to be available soon. And I highly recommend that movie. I love that movie. That was the, it's also known as The Emancipation of Carly Quinn. It was great. I will be renting slash buying that as soon as I can. I did go to see it in the theaters and I loved it so much. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed that movie. Um, there are two other things I have on my list of things that you can try at home to keep from going stir crazy that I'm personally going to be doing. Uh, one of which is purge. So, you know, go through your closet, try everything on, things that you don't like, put into a donate pile, um, put together like some power outfits so that those are outfits that you feel like you look like a badass in. I have a couple power outfits, but I need to do that with the rest of my, my wardrobe. But after you do that and you have a bunch of stuff that you want to donate, you can go to a site like Give Back Box and put everything that you want to donate into a box to um, ship to them. They'll have information on their website about how to do that. And last but not least, I'm going to talk to you again about gratitude journaling. Gratitude journaling is the number one thing that has had a positive impact on my life and since I started doing it in January. And I'm telling everyone about it. Everyone needs to do it because it just makes you feel better. Or at least it makes me feel better. Um, and there's like proven science behind it. You're biohacking your brain when you're doing gratitude journaling, so you should do it. All right, so to, yeah, um, sum it up. I'm staying at home for the, for the foreseeable future. I literally think that I will probably end up being home until August at the, at the earliest. When I've been doing research on this, it looks like we could be 18 months to two years out trapped in our homes. So yeah, um, lots of reading. I can get a lot of reading done in that time. But I'm not panicking. I'm just staying in and I'm staying in with my loved ones to keep us safe and keep everyone around us safe. So I'm not panicking. I'm not hoarding any products. I'm just being sensible and staying home. Let me know how you're doing. You know, um, if there's any specific type of content you're going to want to see, because I'm going to try to do more videos than before, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share. If you're wondering what to watch next, check over here because I'm going to suggest some awesome stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.